now let us talk more about these input layers hidden layers and the output layer so actually in this example we have only one hidden layer actually we can have more hidden layers multiple hidden layers so that we can be more accurate for our prediction so this example has five hidden layers and the output value a single output value binary in this case and then three input values so these are just again i'll explain it again that these are the neurons these circles represent neurons right so these are connected with each other so these are interconnected so this one is connected to each and every neuron of this hidden layer same thing goes for this input value and these are in turn connected with each other again so and these all will produce some kind of output according to their activation functions and we will get output value and the prediction will be more accurate according to the hidden layers it actually depends on example to example that how many hidden layers do we want so this hidden layer is actually known as hidden because it is abstract right because we're having three inputs and we are going to get some kind of output so this whole layer is totally abstract for us we do not know what is happening and now let us talk about the example so see independent variable one so x1 x2 and xc these are the three features this can be anything like i talked about before right this can be eyes ears or whatever depending on our data set and there can be multiple so these are not only three there can be any number of independent variables these are provided as input to the neuron which is the hidden layer it contains the activation function and then we get some kind of output right this is just a single structure so here and also one more thing up to now we had output value as binary right it can be either a cat or a dog but in general there can be multiple classifications as well right there can be multiple classification problems so there can be multiple output values as well if y is a categorical variable and now let us talk about this hidden layer or this neuron that is functioning accordingly so see this is the input variable 1 2 and 3 that has been provided it has some kind of weights so we are going to talk about these weights afterwards so suppose this is w1 w2 and w3 this weight is changed according to the error that we get so what is happening this x1 x2 and x3 it is going on we have this w1 we are summing this w1 and w2 so basically multiplying and adding them so w1 x1 w2 x2 w3 x3 is being multiplied and added together to this thing and then it is provided to the input of the activation function so this phi represents the activation function this summation of wi xi is provided as the input and whatever activation function is according to that function we will get output so these function let us talk about this activation function now this activation function can be anything it can be a sigmoid function it can be an inverse tan function it can be a relu function or a reeky relu so we can talk about these activation functions in depth but this tutorial is not about them right we are just going to see how do they work so see what is sigmoid so this sigmoid is actually famous for for the output layers so actually these output well layers also over here in this particular figure this output value also has some kind of activation function so generally in general the hidden layers have activation function as relu and this has in general activation function of sigmoid so let us talk about the sigmoid and relu in detail so relu right whatever input do we provide to that relu layer until it is zero it will not provide any input so basically it will pro sorry i meant output so it will not provide any kind of output but as soon as the value is greater than zero it will provide the value of whatever input that we provided so basically y equals to x is this line and with this sigmoid functions for negative values it is nothing so it will provide the values that basically according to this particular mathematical equation and after this zero it will provide values according to this particular mathematical equation there are many functions that we can use that depends on the data set or the neural network that we are going to design so in this case like i told you all in the hidden layer we are going to use this relu activation function so it is zero until the values are less than zero and then it is being the input as soon as the value is greater than zero and at the output value we generally use the sigmoid function to get the probabilities and now let us talk more about how do these neural networks actually learn what are these weights and all so first of all in deep learning how do neural networks actually work in programming fundamentally there are two kinds of approaches one can be that you are hard coding everything and you know what is happening at each and every step and then there is this approach of neural networks so basically in neural networks what we do is we know that what is going to be the input of the function or of the neural network and we know that what is going to be the output so we basically tell the neural network that yeah this is going to be the output that you want to predict or decide 
and based on the input and the output it will learn everything on its own and it will predict the output based on the input values so basically we don't know what is exactly happening in between the input and output values that's why it is basically abstract so one example of this thing can be classification of cats and dogs so suppose we have a neural network designed and we want to determine based on the image that if it is a cat or a dog so for that neural network to train to learn we give it two different folders one can be a folder containing images of all the cats that are possible then there is other folder containing all the images of dogs we send this neural network to these folders and it will learn all the features based on the images in that particular folder so for example a dominant features of cat can be it has whiskers or suppose its eyes or nose or ears or whatever and same thing goes for dogs as well so this neural network has learned from the data that we provided that yeah if these features are dominant then it means that the picture is a cat so after it is it has learned everything from those images if you provide a new image and if you want the neural network to predict if that image is of a cat or a dog it will study the features and it will identify the features that are common for cats or dogs and based on that identification it will predict that if the image that is new is of a cat or a dog now let us talk more about the perceptron which was invented by mr frank rosenblatt at around the year 1958 so this is a perceptron it has some independent variables it has some weights assigned to it and according to the activation function we are predicting some kind of variable so we'll count that predicted value as y hat and we'll compare it with the actual values of y that are available this kind of network is known as single layer feed forward network Now, Mr. Frank Rosenblatt wanted to produce something that can learn by itself and that can adjust by itself. So that's what the aim is. So, see, the independent variables will be some kind of input that will be provided to this particular neuron. We'll apply the activation function, and whatever output we'll get, that will be the predicted value. And now we can compare it with the actual value of y that is available. So we can plot it as well. So you can see this is the y hat chart and this is the y chart. So you can see that there is this difference between the y hat and y values. That means our predictions is not correct. So there is this gap of error that is existing. So for reducing that cost, so basically that error is known as cost that is incurred, right? So this is one cost function which is half y hat minus y whole square. So there can be various types of cost functions, but this is one of the mostly used cost functions which is really famous. We can also use this cost function to evaluate the performance of the model. So what we can do is our target should be that the cost function should be minimum. We will talk about this minimumness of the cost function in the gradient descent part. But there can be various types of cost functions. So I came across this good article which explains what cost functions actually are. So we can basically calculate how much wrong the model was in its prediction. And there are various types of cost functions like this mean error. Then this is the mean squared error that we talked before. This is the most famous cost function. By using this cost function, you can see that as there is difference between the predicted value of y and the actual value of y. the lower the cost function is the closer y hat will be to y so basically what we want is we want this y hat value to be closer to the actual value of y now based on this cost function once we have compared we are going to feed this value back into the neural network according to that cost function so as we compare it back back and back you can see that these weights will get manipulated as actually these are so these are the new values of the weights based on the cost function that was incurred so basically we can only have control over the weights we cannot change the independent variables or the input value right and what we are doing is we are multiplying these independent values or variables by this weight so basically x1 and w1 are getting multiplied and accordingly that goes inside the input of activation function and that's how we get the predicted value so based on this particular cost that has incurred we are going to change or manipulate the weights to get more perfect predicted value mm -hmm.